Tak dah. Semua dah ada dah. Okey, boleh saya dah. Okey. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, we I think this lecture semalam yang side dulu side jadi. Semalam. Untuk dulu side. Intro side. Ada tak lecture dia? Oh, ada pagi tadi. Pagi tadi dulu side bagi. Yes. Lepas dulu side siapa? Pada dulu side tak ada. Ha? Eh? Tak ada. Kata Dr. Awi. Dr. Awi hmm, tak ada. Ni mana ni Hanum, Sazwani, Wan Ahmed, Nurul, Putri. Nur Sazwani. Ada ke semua ni? Eh ada doktor. Ha? Eh? Ada. Tak dengar tak nampak muka. Hmm, dah bilang orang tidur. Hmm? Bengkak ke mata tu. Okay, we started today. Okay. Uh, mana nak hilang kamera ni? Okay, uh, today we talk going to talk about respiratory examination. Uh, respiratory system is just like any other system, eh? very important right there. Eh? I think all, all systems are important. Respiratory, cardiac, liver, GIT, brain, eh? all important. And then very important for you all to able to examine technically must be correct. To get the proper finding, your technical must be, must be correct. Hmm? Technical correct, then only you will get your finding. Eh? If your technical is not correct, then you won't able to get your finding. Usually my teaching, I will teach theory then after that we're going to proceed with, with the practical part. But sadly, because of the COVID, uh, I, I'm able to, to teach you all uh, uh, the practical part. Because what we give a lecture, it's not the same what you saw in the, what you seen when we practice it. And usually you see very fast, uh, lecture okay, give, we give you one hour like that. But examination wise, respiratory system, you can, you can finish complete by 10 minutes. Eh? And the, the most important thing when you do physical examination, you must know normal first. Uh, if you don't know normal, uh, you will not appreciate very much what's abnormal. You have to familiarize yourself as your normal first. Eh? Especially the heart sound, A entry and those things. Eh? What, what is the normal A entry? What is the good A entry? Heard, uh, how, what is good at entry when you ask what you mean to be good at entry and so on lah eh? Okay, uh, I'm today going to give you, going to give you the introduction of respiratory examination eh? And then, new unit is started from when child come out already, when the child starts to cry, color of gas score is part of the assessment already eh? And then, you know that air is something that very important and you can die without air within a few minutes. Eh? Without oxygen, you will die within a few minutes. Eh? It, it will cause lung uh, to, uh, damage to your organ, vital organ first like brain and after that because of hypoxic, you're going to die. Do you know what the the the, the function, what, why your body needs oxygen? Anybody, anybody knows why you need oxygen? Hmm? Cellular respiration. Hmm, for cellular respiration to production of ATP. Energy. Without it, hmm. you cannot, your body, your cell cannot function, cannot produce energy, and then as cannot function as a normal and alive and that and result in death. Yeah? Okay. There are the, the many functions, eh? breathing, defense, metabolic, the 
uh, filtration, deposit, endocrine, doesn't matter what. The main thing that you, you need to know is the within a gas exchange. Eh? The rest, if you're interested, no? the main thing we, go to, we are whispered to is breathing at the gas exchange. That's the main. The other functions are also important. Eh? Okay, this is the respiratory system. You can look here. Eh? And then it started, the respiratory system started from the oral uh, the nasal cavity, oral cavity, or then goes down until your alveoli. Eh? Eh? And then it's a respiratory system, including the diaphragm, eh? respiratory muscles, eh? intercostal muscles. All this we consider as respiratory system. Eh? I think you learned it during your preclinical year. Eh? So they are upper and lower. You know what's the, where the upper is, where the lower is? Hmm? You know where the upper and lower is? Hmm? Yes, okay. The upper is, uh, you know, your tra uh, tracheal inlet. Eh? Tracheal inlet. You can see uh, the tracheal inlet where your trachea goes into your in, uh, thoracic cavity. Anything above it is a upper airway, and it, anything lower it is a, considered as a lower airway. Eh? So uh, everything the extra thoracic will be upper airway, everything the intra thoracic will be lower airway. Eh? The trachea inlet here. Eh? So the nose, pharynx, adenoid, Tonsils, epiglottis, laryngeal trachea are considered as a upper airway, and the bronchi, low, uh, two third of trachea, eh? two third of trachea, and then the bronchi, bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli considered as a lower airway, eh? the upper airway and lower airway. So you have to recognize surface marking, hmm? where's the upper lobe, the oblique lobe, eh? and then the because you know that the bo the body, yeah, the they are but they are, are on, on the right lung they have they got they have, how many look on right lung? Hmm? Anybody? Ten looks. Eh? How many look on the right lung? Three. three lobes, eh? upper, mid, and lower lobe. And then the left lung will be uh, two lobes, eh? upper lobe and lower lobes. Eh? And then the main feature in left lung will be lingula. Eh? And then you have to recognize where the marking. Eh? Marking, you have to know the horizontal fissure, nearly at the fourth the coastal space. And then the, what lobe is, what, what fissure is this? This is the? Oblique fissure, and there is a another fissure here. Eh? What is it? another horizontal fissure? Eh? So there is upper lobe, mid lobe, and lower lobe, and here, eh? and then the pleural space in between, eh? and then this toxic cavity, and at this entry, uh, this uh, on the right side, on the left side, just upper lobe, eh? middle lobe and the oblique lobe eh? here and it's near at the you see near and lingula is here eh? hmm. lingula is here so roughly knows the marking eh? the fourth eh? to, to six and then the and anterior this is uh, the anterior, what? This anterior view, posterior view. Eh? Posterior view mainly upper lobe and lower lobe, roughly. Eh? So important when you do examination is that when you ascultate, you know which lobe do you ascultate. Eh? So here, eh? schematic, eh? schematic, hmm? and then when you when you start your examination, it's always good to examine the surrounding. Hmm? Look at the surrounding, examine at the surrounding, because it gives you the ideas how the patients 
are, eh? how the patients are, give you some ideas. Good. So you look, is there the nebulizer, drug, inhaler, any medication around, any oxygens, eh? any center line, eh? any the child is weak or alert, is the child running around, if they seem ill or distressed, who with them? Eh? And then listen. Eh? Examination started with using all your eh? all your uh, uh, your five pancha indra. Eh? I mean that the eyes, the vision, the hearing, hmm? and the smell. So you also listen. Listen for audible cough. Listen for any wheeze. Listen. Eh? Look. Do you notice any difficulty? In buildings, these all give you the ideas, and eh? even all the child, all the patients, and it is part of the examination. Yeah, when patient come walk, or when you went to the patient bed, you already observe the surrounding, and then you already have clue already how your patient is, how bad your patient is, what is your patient problems. Eh? So examination in children, you have you have to realize that a large chunk of your examination part is is observation. Because children, uh, it's not they are not that cooperative. When they are not well, they are not well. They are, can be very clumsy. No, they can they, they refuse to be examined. They refuse to take out to take off the shirt and so on. Eh? So you, many the information you can get from children is their is from their your observation. It helps a lot, eh? especially in terms of severity. It helps a lot of how bad your patient is and eh? how severe your patient is. Eh? So the basic step of clinical examination, you know, is to taking inspection, population, percussion, and scottation. So taking, I, 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 I'm not going to talk about it. I think I will talk about it a uh, few, few days ago. So look for, it's always the, the technique of examination in your mind, in any examinations, eh, your mind, the step is always like this. Inspection, population, percussion, and scottation. The steps are always like this. Eh? Inspection, palpation, percussion, and scottation. The standard step. But what you do in practice in children, you, you have sometimes you have to adapt and you take the opportunity eh, before the opportunity is not there. Hmm? Sometimes you have no choice, you have to ask it first. Eh? After inspection, you ask it first because you know that the child can cry after that, and then uh, then after that, very really difficult to listen what's inside the lung when the child starts to cry. Um, but, however, yeah, not with, with, with standing, in your mind, in your techniques, eh, you have to be used with this step. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and scottation. It is a standard practice. Even in any fraternity, any field of medicine, you will find out it's the same. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and scottation. Eh? So before examinations, wash your hand properly. Hmm? Introduce yourself to the parents, family. Make rapport to the family and to the patients. You, you must know that the child can notice. Eh? If, if many child, if you have a good rapport with the parents, they also going to make your life easy. You can make your life easy. You, if you have, you unable to develop good rapport with the parents, sometimes the child can sense it. Mm, they also not going to accept you. And parents do help a lot for you to facilitate your examination. Parents can help you a lot, make your life much more easier eh? because usually the child will obey the parent command, eh? asking what them to what to do and then like addressing, uh, addressing. We undress the patient, usually is the parent is the best person to undress, not you. Eh? Because they used to read at home, the parent, the one who undressed them, so they, they take it as a usual routine. Yeah. So they undress the patient, the, parent, the child. Actually, the parent, let the parent do it. Yeah. And then position, units, proper examination table. In 
free school free school it depends eh? uh, the best still you examine on on the bed patient lying on the bed is the best lah. especially the examination that bed but it's not that easy yeah. if they refuse then probably you can examine when we're lying or sitting on the mother's lap. Okay. Adolescent, well, they can they examine. You can you you can accept that as adult. Examine as like adult. Eh? This is the way. Remember to wash your hand properly, eh? because you don't want to transmit anything from you to the patient. And expose the area needed. And always parents should ask parents to undress the child. Eh? And if the child is young, you can parent to participate to help you. And then if the child is a bit older, probably they can do it in their own. And because you, you know, exposure time should be minimized and as usual, as standard practice, as I mean from the right side. Eh? Look at the posture, body position, body shape, skin color, any unusual behavior parent child interactions it gives you some clue eh? reaction to someone new entering the room fat or skinny rashes scar scar ask any tenderness around before you start to touch them eh? and then don't forget to introduce yourself also who you are what what you what and tell them what you want to do and examination is you you start with general examination in our country, culturally, people don't like to touch the head first. Eh? So you always touch the hand first. Eh? Always touch your hand first. As I mean the hand first. Eh? As I mean for the clubbings and you go up. Eh? And then this is our culture. Even you also, I don't think you like to be touched at the head first. Hmm? This is and we our way we when we 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 we, we when we kill a rapport sometimes we shake hand eh? so that's how we do it yeah. as I mean start from your hand and look for the clubbing yeah spiritual synosis tremor weapon tremor any but at your uh, hand any distendedness and then then you go up eh? you go up hmm? is your you go, then you this is it. I mean, it, clubbing. Look for clubbing, eh? and then uh, this. I don't think this is any synopsis, eh? and then after you go to this clubbing, eh? then after you go hand, you go to the face, eh? and at the face you look for inspections. At the face you look. Pelo or general examination, eh? club, pelo, and then uh, to jaundice, eh? and then you look to the nose. Eh? At the nose, you look for anything. Is the nose you can think uh, you can you can look. Eh? Sometimes at uh, sometimes we look at uh, to middle to be net, and then you go to the mouth. Eh? We look from the hand. We go up. Eh? And then the nose look the patency, nasal flaring, nasal polyps, discharge, mucous membrane, and sudden tenderness. Usually you press the both side of the nose, eh? Yeah, to look for sinus tenderness, eh? And then throat, look for the lip, fissure, dryness, tongue, teeth, eh? And also throat at the back of the throat, look for the tonsil, the size of the tonsil, sign of inflammation. And then, and actually, we don't look beyond the throat, eh? In children, eh? Certain, 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 sometimes certain, certain, certain condition we suspect, which is need examination further beyond the throat, then you need a specialized team to do that, eh? So this you can see here, the tonsil is inflamed and eh? enlarged, eh? Tonsil, eh? And then. After you're gone, the, the from the your arm, hmm, then you go to the after you finish your face, eh, 
then you go to the to the your chest eh? so in the so when you look at the child at the patient at the child you then you go to the chest eh? the chest what you must know what to look at yeah? so you have to look for let's say you have to you, you must know the what you want to look at the chest eh? you want to observe first as you sure observe respiratory movement and respiratory rate rhythm eh? depth quality respiratory and also notes is there any noisy breathing grunting sir, or is there any wheezing any stride door look for all those things here yeah? so a few little bit about physiology to understand usually the the what the, the first you must know the rate are different according to the age remember that eh? The rate you is different according to the age in children. The second thing, the because you have to understand that the inspiration is an active process, expiration is the passive process. When you inspire, when you expire, and usually the inspiration where you ask, where you listen is far is longer than the expiration. You have to realize that eh? the inspiration longer than expiration, the sound. Eh? So there is a usual, the ratio is one in two. Eh? The, the longer, the, no, no, well, I'm sorry, the expression is longer because the, the, the inspiration is uh, active. So when your expression, eh, it is gravity involved. Uh, it's a, it, it, because the body, your muscle relax, the chest fall down, it's more gravity activity, uh, gravity uh, affected activity so it's longer but the air entry movement is at the expression and eh? expression air movement eh? when you listen the air movement and you don't listen at you don't hurt the end of the air movement here when you ask it, you eh? that is that is the usual vesicular breath sound from your alveoli eh? so understand a little bit so you have to understand also the abdominal breathing sound what is takipnik means Takinik means increase respiratory rate. Bradipni, bradipni, eh? bradipnia, eh? takipnia, bradipnia means decrease in respiratory rate. Dipsnia, distress during breathing. Apnea, cessation of the breathing. Eh? And then there is disorder respiratory rate, talking about respiratory depth. Eh? Hypopnea is increase in depth. Hypoventilation is decrease in depth and irregular rhythm. Hyperventilation is increase in rate and depth. Yeah? So you have and then using accessory muscle you have to know also yeah? and then what is accessory muscle of the our yeah? for sternomastoid sternomastoid intercostal eh? diaphragms mainly yeah? and then type of respiratory until the age of six years they still can have abdominal breathing mm? and then after that usually uh, is mainly a uh, chest breathing so you have to recognize that because there are is some importance in terms of severity. Yeah? And then a few pathology respiration, you know, seesaw, respiration means that the chest is at the body, yeah? the chest falls in inspiration and rise during expiration. So usually no more if 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 no more respiration, the chest expand, yeah? rise during inspiration and and falls during expiration, but this is a uh, to a reverse. Eh? Because small breathing is hyperventilation, gasping, yeah. <sighs> hyperventilation, gasping, and labor respiration. Eh? Seeing the coma or respiratory acidosis, because small breathing. Chinese stop breathing is the uh, breathing because of the high frequency because of brain stem injury. Yeah? Uh, just to get to know them and recognize them eh? and then so as always inspection of the chest wall inspect the eh, the shape of the chest wall symmetry or not any bulging of the chest wall and dropping shoulders or not you have to inspect all those things eh? so there are no standard ap ratio in children eh? unlike adult eh? But roughly, you can know that there is a compared to the body, you can found you can say that 
look like the FPS should increase because it's very obvious one we will notice that especially the case of bronchiectasis or severe asthma, airway obstruction eh? and look for trachea sign and trachea position and then uh, look at the chest wall any swelling scars eh? any skin eruption and goes vein eh? and then hyacinth sarcai very important to recognize that it's a two symmetrical sarcai eh? when you can look at the lower margin of anterior thorax eh? hyacinth sarcai eh? because it tell you the uh, the 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 over usage of diaphragm usually the insertion of diaphragm where there is a uh, you will use for different result in deformity of the chest eh? we, call, we call it as a Harrison sarcai eh? and then you look for the retraction of lower inter intercostal space and other gambata Harrison sarcai and it will be chef I don't think or oh, I think I don't give my 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 proper slide hmm? Hmm. Ada, ada satu slide ayah baru ni, ada ayah susun sarka ya. And then after that you examine, uh, if you can examine a postural chest wall. Remember that, eh? look at the rumah chest wall, inspect the cervical thorax and upper lumbar. So look for kyphosis, scoliosis because both affect the any abnormality of the of the to chest uh, of the thoracic thorax uh, of the chest and was result in can result in abnormality in the lung and we call it cisco to kyphosis or scoliosis eh? because the bengko or those things result in the the size of the lung can be affected also eh? so the funnel chest hmm? the depression at the middle there pigeon shaped chest eh? and then barrel shaped chest eh? Okay, uh, as in Sakai is not pigeon center, it's not the gambar. Eh? This is Pectus carinatum, Pectus excavatum. Eh? Pectus carinatum, excavatum, Pectus carinatum. This is a different chest deformity, shape of the chest. Eh? So, you look at, when you start to do palpation, you look, you palpate the trachea. If you can do it in children, eh? not all children you can do. So, uh, if big enough, you can do three finger technique. It's small, you have to do two finger technique. Eh? So you have to look for the uh, trachea notch. Eh? And then you, 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 you have to look, you have to feel where the trachea enters to the Thoracic, uh, uh, to thoracic cage. It usually a bit on the eh, here, eh, bit on the slightly on the right side, usually, eh, mostly slightly only. Eh. Usually, if you are you, the both left and right side at the, uh, at the side of trachea, it, it should be equal. Eh. But certain condition result in mediastinal, mediastinal shift, then the trachea will be shift to somewhere else eh? let's say the child got pneumothorax uh, on the right side the trachea can be shift to the left side eh? and then trachea tuck is something to tell you that there is a severe airway obstruction i mean the trachea is pulled posteriorly and superiorly during inspiration result from recruitment of recessory muscle and labor breathing usually occur during the severe upper airway obstruction eh? then Later, you can do examine the lymph nodes. Eh? Lymph nodes you have to examine from the back. Hmm? See, yeah, yeah, the group. Eh? You examine from submental, submandibular, and you go to anterior stenomastoid, then posterior stenomastoid, and you go at the occipital. Eh? Examine eh? usually best examine from the back. Yeah, but sometimes difficult you can zoom so far on the front. Eh? So how you zoom in there? You need three finger technique. Eh? Two finger techniques. Eh? In children, probably you can use two, two finger only. Hmm?
So after that, yeah. Propagation, you chest expansion. Chest expansion. The very important chest expansion is the anchor. Eh? When you the anchor here, eh? this is the, the key of your chest expansion. Eh? The key, and then you see how the movement of the chest, the chest movement move, let you know, open up, not up and down, open up, eh? and then you see the separation of your thumb. Eh? Yeah, to see. Uh, and then when you do it, you remember it's upper lobe, middle lobe, and lower lobe. Okay. Uh, I know sometimes it's not particular to do it in the very small children. Sometimes when you do very small children, you when you try to put it your your hand, your palm is already you know cover your one palm already cover the whole chest of the baby. So you have to adapt. Eh? And, and and children, not all children let you going to do going to let you to do this eh? but you have to know the techniques how to do it and if you need to do it you know how to do it yeah so population posture also same hmm? population is uh, you look if you look for the posterior wall also you have uh, expansion you have to anchor it properly eh? you have to look at symmetrical and also anchor your Pump properly, then you look for the chest expansion, and and then if you want to do the expansion, chest expansion, make sure the patient able to inhale in full. Very important eh? to know. If not, well, you you uh, if you patient unable to inhale in full and not cooperative, then you say, oh, expansion is not good. Actually, your assessment is not valid eh? because the technique is not correct. And then this is when you do your eh, lower part, you see the anchor, eh? you see the movement of your thumb. And then don't forget heart, because the heart tells you where the mediastinum is. So you have to know where your position of the heart, eh? location at apex speed, eh? apex speed and the heart. And then of course, the corner, and you must feel the apex. Eh? Hmm? Apex and see the apex in the right location or not uh, to tell you it is on the right side of the left side of the chest. Eh? If it's, you cannot feel it or you move somewhere else, then you know that this a uh, displacement of the mediastinum. Eh? So vocal fermenters, vocal fermenters increase in this condition consolidation. Eh? Collapse on pattern, but decrease in this condition, role effusion, yeah, pneumothorax, emphysema. And then uh, usually use as to the patient to me uh, to the chart to say nine, 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 because you want the high frequency nine. And you do it in upper, mid, and lower zone. So you remember when you you know inside the chest, the low, but when you examine, you examine the upper. The, the upper low, the upper zone, mid zone, and eh? lower zone. Uh, eh? The first two rib will be upper zone, two to four rib will be mid zone, four to six rib will be the lower zone. You examine on that way. That when you where you put your hand, you can roughly figure out which lobe you are going to examine. Hmm? So when you examine, use the zone. Eh? So vocal fermenters is also need the children to cooperate. Eh? Sometimes when you ask to say 999, they will laugh at you. They thought it's a game. Eh? So you must know how to handle. If you can do it, big children, adolescent, probably they will they will allow you to examine. In small, in, in, in toddler, probably they don't allow, they don't, they will not obey your command. So you have to adjust accordingly. Eh? Percussion technique. Okay, percussion, very important is a technique. Many people wrongly unable to get the good percussion because the wrong technique. This is the right technique. It has to be 90 degrees. Eh? Middle, your middle finger or left hand, and then your percuss will be at the 90 degrees. It has to be at the movement only at the wrist. It's not your forearm or your arm. Hmm? At your wrist only. Movement. Eh? You have to practice it. 
you want to know if you go percussion or not you try to percuss everything and you can see the difference between you percuss the book ke, you percuss abdomen you percuss your chest and you percuss bone you percuss the heart soft tissue solid all of the difference and in term of the quality the quality of the sound that it tell you that you have done properly hmm? you have done properly eh? Bekas. if you unable to do it properly the technique then unlikely you're going to get the result so the percussion technique eh, is the second uh, over so the percussion eh, uh, when you percuss the chest initially you're going to percuss from up to down every intercostal space go down go up down eh? Eh? and then when you percuss up to down you on the on the right side remember the liver upper uh, the liver the liver is dull so uh, at certain at six or fifth you will feel the dullness of the liver they tell you the upper your upper, the, the upper border of the liver and the right side on the left side there's a heart when you percuss up to down sometimes you feel some dullness on the left side it tell you the heart heart is there okay? up to down eh? then after that you percuss uh compare left to right left to right left to right left to right, right upper zone mid zone lower zone then you can a whole picture of your your what to the sound from the chest when you do the percussion percussion eh? and then hmm? so there many there many and then you percuss then you when you percuss okay uh, uh okay then uh, on the left side also you feel the tympani eh, sound because of the air free stomach eh? and then when you there is the percussion eh? but when you percuss at the back okay if big children you can percuss lateral at the same time if you big children adolescent you percuss the lateral to help you the sound but in small children toddler very difficult to because it's the, the chest is small you don't need to do that in infant some more yeah? you don't need to do that posterior in children where you percuss usually you percuss eh? the adult you percuss interscapular region but in children we just percuss eh? without because the interscapular region too small to do the percussion so we just percuss straight eh? yeah. but remember that when you percuss downward eh? we disregard the interscapular region remember the scapula bone the sound a bit different eh? but it can still give you some information eh? so uh, okay, you know the upper lower of, of the liver eh? and then the uh, the liver is because a certain condition like area obstruction severe area obstruction the liver will be pushed downward so you cannot feel the upper border of the liver eh? and then do, uh, do the liver normal liver position at the age of six months you can see one two finger breath fingers below the rib cage until two years you can still feel the figure the liver eh? two years uh, above usually you cannot feel the liver you know puppet the liver eh? this is the result uh, dullness you heard when you because dullness eh? pneumonia hemothorax hydrothorax eye water in, in, in lung cavity in the thorax cavity pulmonary edema and tumor eh? and the hyper resonant eh? not because hyper resonant eh? is emphysema and pneumothorax eh? and sometimes the uh, if the lung there is during acute sensation bronchial asthma when there is all air trapping you can see hyper resonant eh? So this where is it? When you remember when you percuss, eh? you percuss intercostal space first, eh? then you percuss upper zone, mid zone, lower zone. Remember the upper border of the liver, and then the cardiac dullness, eh? scar tympani. Eh? So you, the normal one will be resonance. We describe as resonance, eh? hyper resonance or dullness. Eh? If uh, if at the back. Eh? and resonance and hyperson dullness eh? you want to know the dust very easy like you percuss hmm? the table is the dullness eh? it took us here eh? 
your chest is a resonant. Eh? Okay, then after you have this, you, you, you after you're done your percussion, you go to auscultation. Eh? Okay, the auscultation. Hmm, what you look at, you look at your auscultation. Eh? Okay, first you must know the air movement. Hmm? That, that's, that that one that I think I was not to do the eh? Mana tadi ya? Apa lah? Dua ya. Ah, okay. You must, okay. You must know, you must recognize what is normal. Eh? Okay, normal breath sound. Eh? The auscultation. Eh? So, first vascular breath sound. Eh? Usually in all entire surface of your lung. Eh? Vascular breath sound where the air, the air move inside your alveoli. Eh? Alveoli. Eh? Alveoli, alveoli. Eh? Uh, there is air in, goes into your alveoli and move. Eh? That is your breath, your vascular breath sound. Bronco breath sound, usually you heard because combination of the uh, uh, but where there's some big airway, at the same time there is an alveoli is there. So you call bronchial breath sound. Bronchial, bronchial breath sound is when there is a, you heard only the movement of air inside the airway only, big airway. Eh? That's called bronchial breath sound, eh? big airway. Eh? So when you heard the bronchial breath sound, when there is consolidation of the alveolar. And when the consolidation of alveolar, result in you, you cannot hurt the alveolar breath sound, you only hurt the movement of the air inside the large, the airway only, especially the large airway, because that's what, that's what we call bronchial breath sound. Eh? And then the other thing is absent or diminished breath sound. Eh? So when there's no air movement inside the lung, there's no, there will be absent breath sound. So, but rarely you, you will listen for that. Most of the time you will hurt is the decrease air entry. I mean, that because of pathology condition, result in air movement in the lung is reduced. Because it decrease air entry. Yeah? So you have to rec recognize that. Eh? So if here, you can see all the lung field will be the eh? vascular breast sound. Eh? All the lung field. Here, you can hear there's something the bronchial vesicular brain sound because there is a alveoli above it and there is the AV and the AV alone, you can hear is bronchial brain sound. There is nothing, no, no, no alveoli, they call bronchial brain sound. Eh? So the breast sound, vesicular brain sound, the inspiration, eh? Eh? inspiration, uh, softer, yeah? inspiration when you, actually the expression phase is longer, but you only heard a third or oh, twenty percent of expression phase only. Yeah? So you heard the the expression phase seem to be short. Yeah? Yeah? Bronchial vascular breath sound here you heard both equal. The sound a bit more harsh. Yeah? Yeah? Bronchial breath sound. Here it's easy. You just got it. You try to put your stethoscope at your at your trachea there. Yeah, you can see. Stop a gap. Yeah? Stop. Yeah. So there's a bronchial breath sound. Eh? There is a breath sound. You hear this mainly. Eh? So mainly you listen here vascular breath sound, bronchial vascular breath sound, and then the bronchial breath sound. Eh? Uh, and in, in, in small children, in, in baby, 
Sometimes you heard more of this, eh? All over the lung field, eh? small small children and babies, eh? This is because of the the alveoli is still not locked yet, not much yet, not so many yet, eh? and the, the lung field is small. When you put your stethoscope, you not only ascotic the alveoli, but you also ascotic the airway, yeah? because it's small, hmm? and the lung piece is not the lung the, the lung the lung size is not big, yeah? So at, at, if the lung size is big, when you ascotic at periphery, it more mainly is the alveoli. Yeah? So you have to recognize that. Eh? So second thing you have to recognize the extra sound. The, what the sound extra sound you need to recognize? Eh? You have to know mainly the stridor. Eh? Stridor you can hurt, but sometimes you can ask listen ascultation, wish, wish you what you you heard. Rongkai is what your Ascatic, what you listen to, eh? Rongkai, eh? which is what you heard, well, right? Rongkai is uh, when you ascatic, you listen, sound, which is rongkai. Okay, grunting, usually you can hurt. Eh? <laughs> Not, eh? Eh? You try to grunting, sorry, uh, uh, grunting, do inspire, not inspire. Which do you start to. <laughs> Eh? Doing an end of spire, eh? grunting, eh? and then crackers or rails is crap. Eh? I use this one so you can know you watch a book, you uh, book, you read your US book, use a lot of crackers and rails. Eh? In Malaysia, we use capitation, eh? we use the UK capitation. You have to recognize the fine capitation and the cost capitation. Not already, eh? and then. This is the thing that you have to recognize before you start to ascultate. Eh? So when you ascultate, hmm, you ascultate, you ascultate, eh? you always remember when you ascultate, eh? uh, your, you use the diaphragm, this is part of the stethoscope. You always look at the upper, me and lower zone. You understand that? I, I still remember, upper and me and Lower zone, you yeah, ascot the air. And then you, 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 know, you put your upper, mid, and lower zone. Then you ask a tick, you compare left to right. Eh? Upper zone, left and right. Mid zone, left and right. And then the lower zone, left and right. Usually you took two breaths. Eh? The, minim, the maximum, the minimum two breaths. Well, right, you, already, or you can already figure out what's inside, what, what to listen, what is there. Sometimes you need more than that. It's okay. Eh? Listen. And then you have to compare. You look for the inspiratory, the expiratory. You have to listen. Inspiratory, expiratory. Don't listen. Just sound only. You have to decide. You have to decide the end, entry is good eh? or not. Decrease or not. Then you listen for additional. What kind of the, the sound? Is it a vesicular, bronchovesicular, or is it the bronchiobre sound? And then after that, you have to uh, listen. Is there the additional sound? Uh, mainly the wheezing, the ronkai, eh? any ronkai, any transmitted sound, or any wheeze, I, I don't, uh, I don't, any crepitation. You have to decide crepitation mainly at inspiratory or expiratory. Is it fine or cost? Easy, yeah. Eh? Very easy, is it? Okay. If the patient cooperate, eh, the technique usually is ask the patient to open the mouth a little bit and eh, take, breathe in and out. Eh, if patient cooperate, eh, eh, then you can listen eh, in and out. To, eh, do, if, you, if the patient not cooperate, you do your best. Lah. Hmm? Okay. And then,
Ada lagi I missed tak? Okay, if the patient cooperate, you can ask patient to use what we call 999. What we call that? Worker? Primitus. Primitus. The first one, worker apa tadi? Yang yang tu, yang you put your, okay. Yang the first one, worker apa? This is worker primitus kan? Yang 999 kan? Yang askar, yang palpation tadi, worker apa? Chest expansion. Eh? Chest expansion. Ah, ni eh. The first one lah. Eh? The one you want to feed the vibration, is it? Yeah. Then you feel when you feed the vibration of the voice, eh? You ask patient put nine nine nine. When you when you palpate the patient, you put at upper and mid and lower zone, eh? Right. Tapi for vocal resonance, that is vocal primitive vocal resonance. Yeah, sorry, local, this is local resonance, sorry. Yeah? But when to do local primitives, different, you want to, when you ask Kartik, yeah? Which one, which one, I, I, I miss out already. Which are local resonance, which are local primitives? Anybody? Hmm? So miss out, yeah. Oh, tak tahu. Okay, hmm? mana under percussion, right? For vocal parameters, uh, when we put our hand on the patient chest and let the patient say 99. For vocal resonance, we use a uh, stethoscope at different spots while the patient. Vocal okay, resonance when you ask it. Sorry, yeah. So tadi betul vocal resonance. No? Vocal uh, resonance. Vocal resonance is vocal parameters is when you put your hand. You see the vibration when you ask patient to say 999 eh? Okay, when you go upper, mid and lower zone. But rocker primitus is when you ask out it, eh? Same way, same technique. Upper and mid lower zone eh? But if the patient can cooperate with you eh? You use, you, I prefer use 999 because you want the the, 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 the high frequency 9 no? eh? Then you have to remember then, is it, okay, sometimes you, you are lucky if you have a uh, severe consolidation, when you put there, you ask patient to put nine, you can see that it seems to be the sound come near to your ears, eh? we call it a whisper petrol eh? at your ears, and then with severe consolidation. Eh? But, but sometimes it increase only vocal resonance increase. Eh? But there's if you know vocal resonance, you know you know that usually is mainly fluid. Eh? It's fluid, then there's not, not consolidation, fluid, there will be a decrease in vocal resonance. Eh? Okay. Uh, if the patient cooperative with you, then you can do that. Hmm? If the patient not cooperative with you, no need to do that. Hmm? A little bit about the breathing pattern. Eh? Breathing pattern, you have to look when you look at the patient, eh? your observation. Eh? You have to the apnea, tachypnea, bradypnea, apnea, hypopnea, chain stock, eh? thyroid, thyroid, cosmol. This is the main thing. Eh? Look at this. Eh? Tell you the breathing. Eh? So try to recognize. I know most of the time you remember tachypnea eh? and then the the main thing that you always see will take it near. But sometimes you can also see chain stop eh? and go small breathing. Eh? The rest, if you have, you have to be up, apnea, is another one, mainly in small children. You can look patient to be apneic. Eh? You notice patient can stop breathing for a while, breathing back. Hmm? So a few more abnormal findings. Eh? 
recession, stridor, wheeze, grunting, using accessory muscles, gasping, uh, crepitation. Eh? We discussed alone just now. Ronkai, Ronkai got, I just remember Ronkai only, eh? or wheezing. Eh? And then after you finish your scottations, eh? you ascotate both the, the in front and the, at the back. And then you also remember you ascotate at the, then you go palpation eh? at the abdomen. To look, is there any liver we push down or not? Okay, eh? so basically, you what you do is that when patient is a mini respiratory system, is first you inspect the patient, look at the patient, you introduce yourself to the parent, and then you after introduce yourself to your parents, uh, try to get a report with the child. Then the technique where you want to examine the patient usually. If the parent, if the patient are very cooperative, yeah, adolescent, then you can ask the patient to sit uh, uh, to uh, lay on the bed, forty-five degrees yeah, or thirty degrees to forty-five degrees. Then you can proceed with the examination. But that is the ideal. You know, you cannot do that always in the children. It's not like that. Yeah? And then they may be cooperative. They uh, but they don't like to lay down. Even they would prefer lay down, they would prefer sitting, uh, to lay at 30 degrees, or they would prefer to uh, sit on the mother's lap eh, or lying on the mother's lap. And then you have to find, you have to adapt. Hmm? And exposure, exposure, expose properly, but try to ask the parent to help to expose the child, part parent to participate. Adolescent is okay, you can treat as adult. Then you, you start your observation. You look at the child, at the patients. You observe your observation. You think a patient is well, not well, in respiratory distress or not, mild, moderate respiratory distress. From the observation, you, you already know for the observation, eh? you, you can look patient or the sinus or not. If the patient is uh, lethargy, if the patient is uh, 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 drowsy, you can see the no nasal flare or not, using the accessory muscle, subcostal, intercostal muscle, the patient is having abdominal breathing, and then you look patient tachypnea or not, or patient's apnea, patient is have the cosmol breathing, and you can listen, is there any stridor, wheeze, eh? you can listen, you can hear already, eh? yeah. you can listen already when you listen, then you, you examine, start from the arm first, your palm, look for clubbing. Look for clubbing, you feel the pulse. You feel the pulse, you see the chest tachypnea or not, or tachycardia or not. Eh? The, uh, and then you prefer synosis or not. Then you look, if you can, patient can cooperate with you, you can do, you see the CO2 tension or not. Eh? And then you go up. Hmm? Then you go up, hand, and then you go up to the, then you feel the face. The face, pale, pink, eh? And then so, uh, uh, join this and, and do all those things. Eh? You see the nose pattern or not, septum, all those things that do the mouth. Eh? And then the mouth that is center sinusis or not, you can look all those things. Eh? And center sinusis or not, especially the tongue. And then you look to, to tonsil, throat, if you can do that. Eh? If the patient allows you to do that, you do that. Eh? But sometimes, you have to wait for a while first because, because if you do that very early, then they don't cooperate you to do examine the chest after that. Oh, so it doesn't mean you, oh, you must do throat, throat and throat. Anyway, you have to adapt. Eh? You, you know that you have to examine that later. Throat can be the last one because it can, if some patient not that cooperative. Eh? You examine the throat, they don't want you to examine the other thing. Eh? But then you go to the neck. You look at the neck, eh? is that neck the tracheal notch or not? Tracheal, is there any uh, what, move, what, tracheal notch, tracheal, tracheal tuck or not? Eh? Neck. And look at the chest, chest deformity of the chest, any deformity of the chest, eh? the one you can do the examination also, uh, do the inspection, early inspection, general inspection, the chest, shape of the chest, movement of the chest, eh? And then you you start to uh, do the chest expansion. Uh, chest expansions for those who are corporate. And then you do the, after that you do your, the 
uh, your your apex b to see is there the the mediastinum is uh, to mediastinum is uh, to uh, shifted or not and then after that you can start your uh to vocal fimitus that one is if patient corporate upper mid or lower zone and then your vocal then after you start your percussion eh? percussion from top to down and compare left or right right or right see the percussion resonant dull or hyper resonant and then you start to auscultation auscultation the target you ask after mid middle lower zone two breath usually two breath we need more and it's okay and then you listen a entry good or not any additional sound what type of readings is eh? the breath sound is it a bronchial breath sound or is it the is it the vascular bronchial vascular breath sound or vascular breath sound eh? and then vocal resonance if the patient cooperate with you eh? then you do is at the back similar similar way at the back eh? similar techniques eh? at the back and then at, from the back you can examine the you look the bcg scar and look for the cervical lymph nodes eh? if you look if you cannot do cervical lymph nodes uh, posterior you can do anterior leave a patient lying down right? but most patients they copy you can they can sit up you can do the post examine the uh, neck the what the neck lymph nodes and then after that you examine the liver to see liver if been pushed down or not so you finish your examination and you do it by 10 minutes eh? I give you an example. Eh? Skip uh, plural effusion. Yeah? The reduced tetal perimeters, reduced chest expansion, stony dullness, we do air entry, no added sound, we do solutions. You know this plural effusion. Consolidation. Yeah? Increase the vocal perimeters, reduce expansion, down percussion, bronchial breathing. The bronchial breathing is because that every line consolidate. So when you scut it, you only listen the airway sound only. So the airway sound will be the bronchial. Eh? As I say, you want to know bronchial breathing, you just cut your trachea. That's your bronchial breathing. And then the capitation is there, in vocal resonance. And when you watch vocal resonance, you can sometimes you heard that it's somewhere from your ears here, very near to the bite. Yes, eh? Pneumothorax, directed trachea, reduce vocal perimeters, hyper resonance, reduce airway, dual percussion, reduce air entry, reduce vocal resonance. Collapse, directed atrachia, reduced uh, tractile vocal perimeters, dull percussion, reduced entry and capitation. Eh? So this is all the pathology finding. But you have to decide, is it bronchitis, is it bronchopneumonia, is it asthma, is it all other things? Eh? You have to decide. Eh? You find the pathology, eh? your pathology and this is your diagnosis. Okay, any question? Hmm? Any question? Da? Neuro Sophia now, Mona? Hmm? Neuro Adega? Adi doctor. I'm with an ass over. One ash. One ash. Ah. Banyak nama tak ada nama nama. Ah, siapa datang siapa datang. Wan Ashraf mana? Wan ada. Hmm. Wan Ashraf tak ada. Okay, any questions? Ada question tak? Question. Hmm. Uh, how can we differentiate between normal breathing and deep breathing? Because in hyperbolic patients, normal breathing, eh? A deep deep breathing in hyperbolic patients. Normal breathing. Ah, tell me lah. Normal breathing and deep deep. And deep breathing. Deep breathing, you. Tidak dalam lah. Normal breathing tak biasa ya. Biasa. Jepun 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 exercise. Macam mana awak nafas macam mana? Cuba lagi itu 45 ke pusing-pusingan ke? Lepas tu tengok awak breathing. It's a deep breathing. Hmm? Dia tarik yang dalam. Eh? Sekarang ni relax saja. Eh? Maksudnya kita nampak dekat inspection lah ya, Doktor. 
Ah, do inspection. Hmm. But you have to recognize normal first before you decide abnormal. Okay, ada lagi soalan? Ah, uh, doctor. Ah, uh, what is the difference between ah uh, distress and cessation breathing? Cessation breathing itu berhenti. Stop breathing. Cessation breathing ini stop. Epni, dipanggil epni ya, kan? Eh? Distress itu ini susah nafas. It's a bit distress. Susah nafas lah. Hmm. Okay. All the evidence on of evidence of nasal flare, uh, subcostal uterus session, tachypnea, all that was uh, go, uh, to, to be distress. Eh? Okay, nampak. Distress mean from observation. Eh? Cessation mean that pernafasan tu berhenti. Um, uh, meaning that the, the patient has some emotional expression ke? when they are distressed breathing uh, you can see it during kita tak nampak kita tak kita tak kita tak evoke emotional hmm. in this thing eh kita buat objectively kita nampak pada chest dia daripada muka dia eh? it's not evoke hmm. emotion at all hmm. Hmm? kita objectively kita nampak budak uh, tu distress budak tu uh, increase respiratory rate uh, and then this a constant constant recession cyanosis hmm? and the child become drowsy, irritable, that is panggil respiratory distress. Eh? Tak ada mm. emotion. And don't miss up. Eh? Kalau cessation of breathing, mean that there's no breathing. Ini bukan novel lah. Bukan cerita novel. Ini science. Okay. Any other question? Any other questions? There's a question in the ah. regarding distress breathing dengan sensational breathing. Sensational breathing. Apa susah sangat nak faham? Sensation bahasa Inggeris berhentilah. Buka apa benda sensation tu? English. Bukan sensation doktor, sensational. Sensational, I tak tahu. Tak ada there's no medical term sensational breathing. Jangan pakai term tu dalam medical. Sensational breathing ya. Eh? Tiada term in medical. Don't use that term. Hmm? Itu mungkin dalam novel ke dalam apa ke mungkin ada tapi dalam dalam science tak ada. Ada we any other questions? Uh, doktor saya ada soalan. Hmm. Uh, is it normal to have a reduce only one set of the lung rare lung. rare to have uh, one lung only but there is patient who have one lung only uh, sometimes been born with sometimes because the lung damage okay thank you doctor okay any other question tadi dah Okay, settle. Okay, ada apa lagi tak ada eh? Okay, we complete our lecture today. Yang lecture yang, ada lecture lagi kan? Friday depan kan? Ada, ada group yang Friday, nanti kita bincang. Friday depan ada problem sikit nak buat, ada hal sikit eh? Okay, ah, finish. Thank you, Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you, Doctor.